Greetings and welcome. I am Joffrey the Pardoner, and today we will be discussing a most curious topic indeed. The image to the side of me, or that side, or up, or whichever direction I feel like putting it at the time, is from the latest EU5 Developer Diary, or a Tinto Talk, as some would call it. I won't be calling it that, or Project Caesar, because uh, even the head of Paradox Tinto, the lead of this Project Caesar, Johan, is not doing the greatest job of holding up the pretext that this is anything other than a sequel to the EU series. We know a lot about EU5. Some things we know about the upcoming game are that its start date is all but confirmed and guaranteed to be in 1337, which also means that the Hundred Years War is going to be starting just as the game is kicking off. We also know that the Black Death will be a mere nine years into the game and will surely be an existential crisis for the entire map aside from North America, of course, to be dealing with right as the game is starting. Nowhere else is the proof that the start date is going to be 1337 more plainly stated than in Byzantium. You see, this image was shown to us a week ago, and this image presents quite clearly to us a population makeup of something, a region, a country, but based on the population, the religion, the culture, all that makes it seem quite clear that it is the population and demographic makeup of Byzantium, the Byzantine Empire at some point. Now, I don't think I'm saying anything too controversial when I say that I don't believe that in any world the Byzantine Empire in 1444 has 1.5 million people. <laughs> Now, this information does not tell us much more than that, unfortunately. And we'd only had that much information to speculate on for a week or two, really. However, now it has changed. We now have this image, the one behind me. This image is our newest look at the map of this upcoming game. It presents to us the smallest unit of measurement that is in the upcoming game the areas within states. What used to be called provinces used to become be called cities, depending on the game. I like to call them tiles, personally. Makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside, like I'm a child playing Settlers of Catan again. Ah, uh, simpler times. This time is a little different. You see, those times we had an image of the Delhi Sultanate and India in general, through a culture map mode. This one here. Now, this image is all well and good. It shows us, okay, it's India. We can probably guess that that's the Delhi Sultanate, but unfortunately, due to the nature of the realm in question and the kind of fluctuating uncertain borders of the area, it wasn't quite able to give us a concrete answer as to what the date was. With certainty, many people speculated but we couldn't know for sure. This image, in the background though, this one does confirm to us though, without a doubt, that it is 1337. This map hides a secret. Not a well-kept secret. In fact, every YouTuber from OPB to your mum has discussed the fact that all of these maps that we have been shown lately have uh, the secret political borders underneath them. So what we're looking at here is actually also showing us the vague political makeup of Greece and Anatolia. Now the reason that this map provides us with irrefutable proof, there is no room for error here that the start date will be 1337, is because of everyone's favorite despotate from EU4. You see, over there, Epirus, oh wait, or maybe it's there. I don't know. I'll move myself around again. Epirus is fully independent. We can make this out by the lines drawn on the map here. These dark colored out, thicker lines. That means that it must be in 1337 because there was a very brief period of time between when Byzantium did not own it, yet had these borders here, and when they got absolutely smashed and never to return, 
thanks to the Empire of Serbia rising in the north at this point. So at this point in time, the Byzantines are actually doing pretty well. They're, they're as close to thriving as they have in quite a while been. Uh, they even have the adorable little Philadelphia over there. Oh, who's the most adorable little unconquerable fortress? Yes, you are. You're such a good boy, such a good unconquerable fortress. Yes, I do believe that this starting situation with the Byzantine is going to be centralized around what do you do to combat their constant threats from everywhere, external and internally. I don't think that's very controversial. You see, we've got this little blob down to the side there. That's the Ottomans. They're in a little, little cube right now. But that's going to change very quickly. I'm sure that the, the Ottomans are going to be very rapidly conquering the rest of the Baleuks, both through diplomacy and conquest abjectly. And then they shall make their move for Gallipoli. This little, this little, little nub there. I think, I think it's important. There's like a maybe there's a song about it or something. I don't know. Uh, and then the Serbians will come in from the north. However, that's going to work gameplay-wise. Who knows? So, surely as the Byzantines, you realistically should be hunkering down and trying to make friends. Maybe if you let the Serbians take Epirus, they'll be your buddies against the Ottomans. That would actually be fun. You know, I could see a multiplayer game happening as a result of that. Though you'd probably just end up fighting right away afterwards, because the Serbians would want the rest of the Serbian Empire, and then the Byzantines would want... Yeah, that just wouldn't work. Never mind. Now, we know from Johan saying it in one of his technically not revealing that it's EU5, but if, because everyone already knows it's EU5 and he hasn't outright said it, so it's okay kind of statement, uh, that there is probably going to be a lot of flavor for various nations around the map compared to what we've been used to with EU4. So EU5 is probably going to be in line with how Imperator had a few nations that had mission trees at the start, except spread around to many different people, which is all a rambly way of saying that I believe that the Byzantines are going to have a lot of content because everyone loves a good Byzantium restoration game. So I believe that the game of EU5, this, this Project Caesar, is going to start in 1337, and one of the major flashpoints at the very beginning of the game is going to be the situation with the... King of the Greeks, Byzantine Emperor, Emperor of the Romans, whichever you prefer. I believe that you will be in the process of attempting to, in one way or another, retake Epirus. And there will be some conflict, some skirmishes with the Serbians to the north at the same time, because rather shortly after this, you do lose all of the stuff in the west of them. So I think there will be a choice. The players get to be, you know, classic player, you know, do you do it? Do you not do it? Do you try to do it diplomatically? And I think it's probably going to be a case of, well, the best choice is to just focus on what you've got so you don't stretch yourself too thin. There'll probably be some sort of, oh, if you take too much land, you'll, you'll just collapse under the weight of your empire. It's not that it's a very big empire. Just don't let any of the Roma boos in my community hear I said that. There we have it, 1337, and some of the potential goodies that the Byzantines could uh, be dealing with at the start that uh, makes it feel a little more realistic in my mind. But I wonder if there's anything else, anything less visible that could make uh, them choose this particular day. Oh, oh, that's a big one. That's, that's a biggie, all right. It would certainly seem apparent one reason for this start date being chosen is that it is the very year that the Hundred Years War kicks off. And I think it could not be any more poetic than that, that EU5 starts with the beginning of the Great War that EU4 sees you ending. Because in EU4, you can play as the English or the French, and both of you have the option to not continue the war and just end it there. And I think that here, you'll be able to play as England or France. And as England, perhaps you can say, no, just, just appease them. Let, them. let them take the land. Let them take it. Or if the French 
can choose to just say, eh, whatever. We don't need to take Gascony back from the English. They can they can have it. Whatever. They're still technically our subjects, maybe. But that's wrong. That's wrong. They're lying to themselves. They're coping. The French are coping. They need to do something now. Because the English and the French have been you know, fighting skirmishes over these little pieces of English fiefs in France for uh, at least one or two centuries at that point, I believe. Uh, good old feudalism, eh? If they st if they choose to not fight the war, it <laughs> would prevent an entire century's worth of war, a lifetime of war, you might say. Now that sounds. I think there's a song about that too, isn't there? No. Now, if you ask me, the French and English bashing their heads together as usual is all well and good, but it's nothing compared to when the true Romans, the Holy Roman Empire, really stick it to the king of the greeks for that one they are going to be even better represented in eu5 based on the fact that we're going to have even smaller more minuscule units of measurement these these smaller areas or tiles that can make up all of glorious germany and at this point the hre is larger too i believe they've got provence so that means that We'll have even more of the eight glorious HRE to play around in with smaller countries owning more land. And this is even before Austria gets so big, it's like one third of the size, I believe. Fantastic stuff. <laughs> Just kidding, of course. Unless. Now, what really has my toes tingling is the fact that CK3 only just got its Plagues DLC before we started getting these totally not dev diaries for U5. The start date of 1337 does happen to be a mere nine years before the Black Death happened. Now this plague that happens just under a decade before the game starts lasts just over half of a decade and wipes out over half the population of the old world. And I don't believe I need to explain that to you, but I just need to say it because that is beyond crucial that such a date and time and event happens within the scope of the game so early, we're going to get mechanics for it. And even if that wasn't obvious enough from just the nature of its existence in history. Johan just said it. He just said they're going to do it, and he said they're going to make a dev dev. That's just, I, I can't, he, the, the man just admitted they're going to do it. And as excited as he, as he is to make that dev diary, I am just as excited to talk to you folks about it when he does make it. Uh, I'm also very curious, of course, to wonder how you can fight this most dire of apocalypses that truly wiped out so many sections of the world, turned so many farmlands and settlements and cities into hellscapes with barely any people who once were thriving metropolises, such as they were for the era. Except Poland. For some reason, Poland just didn't really have to deal with it, and I don't quite know why. Maybe the Grim Reaper decided that Poland had had enough, and he offered them a holiday to help catch up with everyone else after all that he was going to put them through in history. In fact, we are in for a much darker game in EU5 than EU4 or other Paradox game in recent times. I believe that EU5 is going to be a grim game that has its themes and general mood based on that starting point of the Hundred Years' War, Byzantium's slow erosion, and, of course, the Black Death starting so soon after the game. Every game is going to be something every player deals with, and it's going to be horrible. All those pops that they introduce in this game will be put to the test. Where Victoria 3 covers up the smog and vile behavior of humanity with its promise of a grand tomorrow, and CK3 is all comedy and laughs with its roleplay role, role and, and RPG shenanigans. Uh, EU5 will, unlike EU4, not let you just 
erase whatever. You don't want to deal with that population anymore. You just, just get rid of it, change its religion, then just convert its culture with the flink of a few dove points, the same as you would upgrade your technology. Just have enough mana and press the funny button to make what you want to have happen go. Uh, now they're all Frankish now. You don't have to deal with them. You, you've you suddenly made all of French... All, all the French are now Dutch because you didn't want to deal with minus 20% goods produced or whatever in that county. So you spend your little points and it's gone. In EU5, it will be much more grim and slow with every population having an opinion on each other and you, as well as you as a nation, your opinion on them and, your, and the policies that you determine will dictate how these people feel because they are not simply a county that is blue and labeled as French. They will instead be a collective population full of many different cultures and social statuses and religions, each with their own opinions on each other and you and their own desires. And they will revolt or leave based on those desires if they are not met. And to top it all off, an unavoidable plague on a scale never before seen by the old world will put each and every one of those 1.5 million pops in Eastern Rome to the test. They will all be thrown into a lottery. 50% of everyone they've known will suddenly disappear. And on a gameplay standpoint, that means that unless we can do something about it, unless we as the player, knowing the apocalypse that come, that is coming, can do something to prevent it, or mediate it, you will lose half of those people. Unless you're Poland. Poland is funny meme country. They don't they don't deal with it. But you will lose half of your people. And you will know these people. You know their class. You will know which specific culture they're from. Constantinople will be a thriving city that shall be reduced to ashes in the wake of this event. Unless we can do something about it. Thank you all for watching so much. I appreciate each and every one of you, even those that don't get to the end of the video and see this message. I see and appreciate you as well. Let me know in the comments down below or on my Discord server if you feel like joining. If you'd like to see me make more speculation and just discussion videos on the subject of EU5, I've got a couple topics in mind, such as perhaps what they might choose to do with colonization, seeing as the unique start date provided to us with 1337 is nearly a century before even Portugal gets into the colonization game. And of course, I will be oh so eagerly waiting for when Mr. Team Lead Johan makes that prophesized Black Death dev diary again i thank you all for watching take care of yourselves and i hope to see you next time bye